Hello and welcome to this cryptocurrency technical analysis where I'm going to be giving you a lovely one today as we're going to be looking at the Bitcoin chart and approaching this as if you are here with me looking over my shoulder. We're going to go exactly how I'm looking at Bitcoin right now. I'll be explaining to you the current trades I'm in, the targets and exactly what I'm looking for next. And I know that you love that information. You love to know and understand what's to come. But I want you to also pay close attention today to the knowledge and insights that I will be sharing with you. OK, I want you to pay close attention to that. It's because it's from these insights and understandings that you can start to implement yourself into your own trading strategies. OK, so you yourself can become a very profitable trader. That's what you're here for. OK, I'm not here to spoon feed you. I'm here to educate you, empower you and really get you up to the level of trader you want to be. OK, this is your journey and I'm here to help you along the way. So I want to keep this one very professional and concise for you. Um, so I hope that you thoroughly enjoy. I'm, I'm going to, as always, enjoy making it. So it's been a little while since my last update. Uh, about Monday last week, I actually done it. So over a week ago, I've been extremely busy with Champions content. Uh, so I've not had time to make these public videos. But here we are with the next public video. And I want to pick up where I left off that last video, where, you know, I made it very clear, right? I was bullish. I was looking for higher prices. Of course, my next major target above us. The next level was that value area low. You know, I was making it very clear. I mean, very, very, very clear into my group, of course, and also in that YouTube video. Um, I was still bullish, expecting higher prices to come, right? <laughs> we had, you know, I was in long and chill positions, okay? I was in those long trades, you know, making it very clear. No short trades, bullish, expecting higher prices. We even had, in this section of the chart here, bearish divergences forming. You know, I'm telling my team, even though we got these bearish divergences, I'm expecting to, them to be leading and I'm looking for higher prices. Where was this value area low? So here we have bearish divergences. You got a lot of people, in my opinion, getting bearish a little bit too early. You know, I was still very much bullish, looking for higher prices. Okay, reminding you even, you know, don't forget about this value area low, but my bias is that we're gonna get higher. We're gonna hit my target. And as I made it very clear, this target for me is extremely important. If we get a reaction, then that's a short trade. If we blast straight through the level, fine, we can look up towards 30K. But this value area low is a massive level to look for the acceptance or the rejection. Okay, what happened in the end? Well, we come up to the level, okay, and as we were looking for, come up to the level for the rejection for the short trade. I'd like to explain this in a little bit more detail so you can fully understand this, okay, because it's very important, the information that I'm gonna be sharing here. So what happened? Well, we can see here when we add on a few more levels. Let's just add on. Um, let's start off with hiding these higher term time frame levels, which are important for me. But we're just going to focus here more locally on the value area and what happened here. OK, so you can see that we come up to this level and more originally, that's come down on like a lower term time frame. I want to explain the first bit of rejection that we got. So you can see here, this isn't really a major rejection. This is not a swing failure pattern. So as we come up to this level around, you know, 3, 4, 5 p.m., we're starting to see this could be potentially viewed as a little bit of a, a failed auction, but not a swing failure pattern. So like I said to my team here, this was at, you know, 5 p.m. while well, we're looking at this on the charts at the time. OK, so I tell my team, you know, this is not a swing failure pattern. Could be classed as a failed auction, but this is not a, this is not a swing failure pattern of that, this price action. And I was telling my team, with the major new event, new news event coming up, we can expect a big fake out and volatility. What news event am I referring to? Uh, it's this one that was happening at 6 p.m. UK time. So at 6 p.m. UK time to 6.30, we had two major news events, right? The interest rates decisions and the FOMC. So it's like I'm telling them to my team, you know, before this wick. So it's essentially while it looked like this. I made it very clear to my team um, with the major news event coming up, we can still expect a big fake out. OK, and then volatility. And I done the daily live streams last week for the team inside the group on the morning. I done Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on this happened on Wednesday in the Wednesday morning. Made it very clear to expect some sort of Darth Maul candle as we come into 6 p.m. UK time. And what happened next? Well, it was very nice indeed. OK, as we got the short trade entry up around there at 28,600. After what? It was after this lovely. Bam, swing failure pattern. So, you know, you can see how I'm preparing my team. OK expecting volatility to come in when at 6 p.m. UK time 
What happened? Look at this wick, ladies and gentlemen. 6 p.m. UK time to the exact minute that we were ready and waiting for hours in advance. We were ready and waiting for that. Swing failure pattern, big fake out on 6 p.m. Exactly on 6 p.m. we got the swing failure pattern. Okay, I'm telling my team, you know, this for me is a short trade now and I'm looking for below $27,000. That's my first major target on this. I'm looking for below 27K. Why? Because now we've got the fake out and now I'm expecting the volatility. Fake out, swing failure pattern. This, of course, at 6 p.m. is a swing failure pattern. This before was not. This was just a failed auction. Then we got a final fake out, swing failure pattern of that failed auction. 20 minutes later, at 6 p.m., the time that we were ready and waiting for, okay? So then that all kind of played out very nicely indeed. We got that short trade entry, right? I just really want you to understand this. It's so important that you understand the theory here. Not a, not a swing fire pattern. We do get the failed auction, but even for myself, while looking at this, I saw the failed auction, but I did not take the short trade here. Did not take the short trade because I was expecting another fake out on that news. And on the news, we got the swing fire pattern. For me, Short trade entry, swing fair pattern when I was expecting volatility to come in after the fake out of the news event. We see these Darth Maul candles, you know, all the time on those news events, right? So then from here, we got the lovely drop to the downside, actually below $27,000, funnily enough. So come down, hit the target below 27K, we start to get this increase in price. Of course, I'm going to go through this next section fairly briefly. Um, I'm leading this up to where we are now. Okay, this next section is not quite as important as the information that I've give, still given you, but I, I'll talk you through it very quickly. Okay, so after seeing this bounce off of around $27,000, we still had a few key levels on our charts. Okay, so I'm going to just show you here an NPOC that we have, 26.462. Okay, and if I just add on some higher term time frame levels. Uh, let me just bring you back a sec. So I just want to show you from this was the daily update then, or it would have been on the Thursday. So on Wednesday morning, I was reminding my team of, of the volatility to come off that value area low. Thursday morning, I'm giving another live update and I'm telling my team where we have two key levels here. And I want to just explain and take a brief moment to educate you and let you understand something. Okay, I've already told my team about this, but I'll emphasize it once more. And that is, um, here you can see a daily level on the top of the CC. Okay, if you're looking at this, you might think, wow, this is a very nice level of confluence. We have a Previous range, mini range point of control, we have the CC, we have the daily level. You know, you're looking at some very strong levels of confluence. So you might think this is a really good place to look for the short trade, right? You've just seen a fake out of the high. You're now looking for the retest. You might look at this and think, wow, this is very strong confluence. This is a very good short trade. Whereas below us, we have just one level, which is a time NPC, a very weak level. Okay, so here you have strong levels of confluence. Here you have a weak level. And I want to explain what I said during this update. I told my team, this looks like a strong level of confluence, but guess what? This is a very weak level. The context of this level makes it weak. And although this is a very weak level, the context makes this a very strong level. And I was explaining how if we come up to this level, I'm expecting price to go straight through it. Would not look for the shorts of this CC and daily, because this for me, although strong levels are actually given by weak context. And this would be the long trade because this, although a weak level, has the strong context. And this truly is the difference between someone just coming into the market and commentating. Okay, anybody can commentate, anybody can give the levels. I think even yourself watching this, you can mark out daily, weeklies, you can mark out NPCs. It's, it's not really difficult at all to mark out levels. So what separates then the commentators that can just commentate and say these are the next levels versus, you know, somebody that really knows what they're doing. You know, I would like to say, you know, I know what I'm doing here. I've been doing this over 10 years. And it's through that experience and intuition that I've gained, gained a very good gauge for this market. So I'm not just giving levels, but I'm actually explaining why some of those levels are weak and I would not look to trade. I would not expect them to hold, even though we have good confluence and how we can have weak levels. And based off of the context here, I'm expecting them to get a reaction. And of course, well, you can probably imagine what happens next. We did go straight up through that level. What many would have considered strong resistance, bam, we went straight through it like butter. And when we come down to this lower level, have a guess what? We bounced off of it absolutely perfectly. 
So it just goes to show there's a big, big difference between people that can commentate and give levels. Anyone can do that um, versus someone that really understands the context and understanding strength of levels. You know, that's, you know, insights that take a lot of experience and understanding to achieve, right? And so now we start to move on to what's happening now. Just wanted to take a bit of a time to explain how you gain that context and understandings. We got started to then get a bit of a triangle formed. How? Because we actually come up through that CC and daily, retested the value area low, and we come down here to the NPRC. I'll show you the NPRC here. You can see time NPRC tapped very nicely indeed for a 3% bounce to the upside. And so what we had yesterday though was of course this bit of a triangle. Okay, I'm of course more of a swing trader now, but guess what, in the daily updates, you've also got Eagle coming in here. Eagle yesterday giving this trading setup off of the one minute time frame, off of a one minute time frame, giving the short trade setup while we're still within the triangle. Okay, so we're still within this triangle. He gave a lovely short trade setup and it actually was the exact dollar high, stop loss not hit. And, um, you know, <laughs> we got a 5% move to the downside to come down towards the NPOC of the triangle. So as we started to break down from that triangle, I told my team 26,600 for me is the target as we're breaking down from this triangle. You know, if you were watching along in the daily update yesterday from Eagle, if you don't know who Igor is, one of the best traders, one of the biggest whales in the space, lovely trader, um, brilliant analysis, and uh, always putting his money where his mouth is. That's what we like from the coaches. And so, yeah, yesterday he gave the exact dollar high, okay, for that short trade entry, and then we let down this run for me to 26,600. What happened at 26,600? Well, you can maybe guess it. Let's set back, add back on our levels. You can see here off of the NPOC, which was absolutely tapped. That was off of, okay, 26,450 zone. But we can see how that ended in a swing failure pattern off of our past two lows, okay? So then we had the last two lows taken out with a wick onto 26,600 off of the NPOC. So yeah, yesterday, you know, you could have, if you played along with us, shorted the exact high off of Eagle's daily update for the scope traders, and then actually longed the exact low off of the swing fire pattern off the target that I gave. That gave you the exact short and, and, and low of the day. Um, but anyway, moving on, uh, we now have still some key levels within this chart, right? So I'm now gonna explain what I'm looking at next. Took a little bit of time there to uh, let you understand how we put in the highs, how I was very, very, very bullish indeed, but I knew that this was a short based off of the reaction, we got the reaction, we got the short trade entry off of the news event swing failure pattern. From there, remained you know, a little bit more bearish then. I'm happy to change my bias. I was bullish looking for higher. We got higher. We got the rejection. We got the reaction. I'm going to trade the charts. We got a short trade entry. Now we've come back down and we've simply gone low of the range, higher the range, lower the range, higher the range, lower the range. You know, so we can get back up to the high or alternatively we break down. And, uh, there are a lot of people I think that are always after the massive moves in crypto. You know, they want to get these crazy big pumps or they want to see these massive drops because they're always after the really big moves. But let me tell you this, this is a 7% range from low to high, low to high, low, okay? You could have already took the short here off of the target to 27K long, back up to the very area low retest. I did not take this short trade, by the way, this short trade I didn't take. I'm still in the short from the swing failure pattern. The short trade on the retest here I didn't take. Back into the triangle, you could have got a short from Igor's trade setup yesterday. So it's like, instead of waiting for like a massive 50%, 100% pump, well, you got to remember, you could have been able to take several different trades within here, which are going to have added up already to at least a 10% gain, okay? So rather than focusing on the massive moves, you've got to remember and acknowledge that actually trading these ranges, although some people might be bored, they might, X, Y, and Z reasons why they don't want to trade it, right? This is where you can make money. If you just wait for these outer boundaries, you know, there is money to be made while price is going, you know, relatively sideways. Of course, it's a 7% sideways range, but you don't need to be waiting for these massive moves. And if you do, you're missing out on a lot of profits to be made right now. So rather than 
rather than just focusing on the massive, massive moves, you've got to remember there's money to be made on this market right now. Whether you're on the one minute time frame, like Igor, making profits, or whether you're a bit of a more of a swing trader waiting for the outer boundaries, like myself, there's money to be made within these sideways ranges. And it's actually relatively easy. Uh, it's easier, in my opinion, to trade these sideways ranges than a massive trend. It's just a lot easier to get into positions, having validations, and then you can let, once you're in these trades, let them run. Okay, so now I'm going to start to explain what I am looking for next. I hope you've enjoyed this bit of the introduction, 15 minutes, but nevertheless, introduction insights, um, dropping some knowledge on you of what we're now looking for and prepared for what's to come next. Uh, before I do that, I just want to mention a few things very briefly to you. And that is, you know, I had some questions. Am I doing the Champions live stream? And you know, I've done the Champions live stream on Sunday, right? I've done my daily morning update live stream today. And I think it, some people were asking this because I hadn't done a public update for like a, a week. <laughs> and uh, just so you know that, um, you know, I've not made so many YouTube videos recently. And that's just simply because I'm working on Champions content right now. You know, I'm doing the Elliott Wave series. I'm doing other other videos right now for the champions. I'm just doing a lot of work and content focused on that. So I simply do not have uh, the time at the moment to do the public videos because all my time and effort is, of course, going to the champions and the contenders. So it's just something to make you aware of. I'll still keep doing these public videos, but they're probably going to be more like once a week. Um, and of course, when I do that once a week, I'll put in more time and effort into it. But, uh, you know, I just simply don't have the time to, to do the, as much public videos as I once was because I'm now focusing much more within the group. Uh, so that's just how it will be. Just so you're aware of that, I've not, I've not disappeared. <laughs> I've not stopped. It's just, um, you know, you're only going to see me more within the group. But when I release these public videos, they'll be of a higher quality. So there's that to look forward to as well. Um, you know, I've done, been doing in my daily updates also altcoin setups. So if you want to understand the alts, I've been doing the altcoins uh, within these daily updates as well. And, um, you know, just so you're aware, the daily updates on Mondays do go out to contenders and champions. So that setup get that was given yesterday that obviously ended in a very nice profitable short trade was out to the contenders and the champions. And you can see this guy, he was a contender that caught the daily update live stream by Igor, caught that short trade, and he made enough bucks to uh, switch to champions. And I agree, legends, Igor, Absolutely. <laughs> or if you missed that short trade, then you could have got into the long of 2600 with me. You know, either way, you know, profits to be made. And you can see it from the comments right in front of your eyes of people that are really, um, you know, profiting from these calls. So that's what I wanted to bring your attention to. And now let's start to focus on what's to come next. So with that, once again, I remind you, we are currently in a range bound environment. OK, we are currently just going into sideways price action. We can see understandably sideways price action okay we got a bit of a sloping downtrend which you could view as a descending triangle so you have a bit of a descending this was a symmetrical triangle that broke to the downside to test the low of the range which now is turning into a bit of a descending triangle right of course um, i did personally take the long off of the 26600 just as i'm in a short from the swing fire pattern of, of the high right so still in this trade, we got the retest. We've come back down to the low of the range. I'm now, thankfully, in a position of short from the high and long from this low. So the way that I approach this is really simple. Okay, so when I zoom into this chart a little bit, I understand I still have that. Although, in my opinion, this is fully tapped, by the way. But just so you're aware, I'm aware, nevertheless, that we could, of course, come down and swing fair pattern the low once more time. So then we get this kind of three drives type view where we come down, take that low one more time and then get the bounce. And then we got, kind of got these three drives, right? So for me, that's uh, definitely a scenario that I'm more, more than aware of. And this for me is like, if I'm, you know, I'm in this long trade, if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. And then I can re-enter at maybe the same price if I get a three drives. Because if I don't get that, well, I'm looking for a larger drop to the downside, right? To around 25,300. So for me, um, it then requires a bit of patience to the downside. I wouldn't long where we are here. I understand if I want another long, I'd either wait for another swing fire pattern or failed auction or for simply lower prices. Okay. And it's the same for the short. So I wouldn't short where we are here. I personally would wait for the bigger outer boundary to come back in to 20, you know, back up to 28,600, right? Up to, you know, up to that 29K zone. And understand that if we get another swing fire pattern, it's another trade for the shorts. Likewise, if we actually flip this into support now, I'm going to be looking back up to those, you know, 30K zones, at least. By the way, that's a very at least target. 
So I'm understanding, of course, uh, before anybody comments, Daniel, you say you're saying price can go up or down. Absolutely, price can go up or down. And guess what? In this market, we do not need to know where price is going next to make money. Understand that. Yesterday, price could have come down to 26,600 and we get the long trade. Price could have rose to around 28K, we get the short trade. We didn't need to know whether price was going down or up next, but we're ready for the long trade on a drop and we're ready for a short trade on the rise. This is obviously from Igor's daily live stream for the champions and contenders yesterday. So you can understand how price, yes, can go up or down. We do not need to know where price is going next to make money. We just need to be prepared for our next long trade and short trade setups. Price can then take either of those directions and we're ready and waiting for the next best opportunities with these high probability trading setups, okay? I know a lot of, especially newer traders, get confused. Oh, you've, you've got a bullish and a bearish plan. Um, you can win whatever happens next. Well, yeah, this is the position that we can put ourselves in as professionals that take this very seriously. You know, I've made multi-million dollars from this market. That's not from luck. You know, that's not because I was born being a good trader. No, I put in time or put in effort. You know, I'm coming on nearly 13 years inside of this market. Every single day I've turned up. Every single day for the past 13 years I've been on the charts. You know, you've not seen me not active for a day, right? Maybe I'll take the weekends off. But Monday to Friday, I'm here all day, every day on the charts. You know, you've always got an analysis. You've always got an update from myself. You know, so this isn't luck. This isn't, you know, natural skill. This was because I've put in the time, I've put in the effort, and I've really got myself to a position now where, you know, I'm, I'm making it look fairly easy. But you have to remember you, that what you don't see is all the time, sleepless nights, you know, feeling sickness of, of the times when I lo lost a lot of my trades and, you know, was losing, you know, money. So, um, you know, now I can make it seem relatively simple, but you have to remember the pain and suffering that I went through to get to the level of trader that I am today, right? Um now, that's not to say I'm perfect, but right now, now I still can make mistakes. I can still lose trades. Absolutely. It's just, you know, I've got my risk management on point. I'm only waiting for the very high probability trades. So I'm not going to just jump into a trade where we are now. I'll wait for, be patient for a next level to the downside or the next level to the upside. So I don't just trade to trade. I remain patient. I recognize opportunity. And when that opportunity comes, I strike, I execute, and I walk away with profits, you know, the, the majority of the time. Um, and of course, now I can help you get to that level, right? I went through the pain and sufferings and put in the time. Um, so now I can aid you on that journey and, and hopefully make it so your journey doesn't have to be as, as painful as mine was. Although understanding that it is natural to, at the start of your career, especially of trading, lose a lot of money, lose a lot of trades. Um, so yeah, that is, you know, kind of acceptable. You have to view each loss as a lesson, as long as you can lose from that and make sure it doesn't happen again. You know, th these lessons are kind of necessary pains to go through if you really want to become the best. I think pain is, is uh, a good lesson to be learned. As long as you don't keep making that mistake over and over again, then of course you've got a very bad, maybe even gambling habit, if that's the case. Uh, it's e easy to fall into the gambling kind of zone in trading because if you trade without a plan you trade with not knowing what you're doing you're, you're a gambler simple as that you're not a trader uh, it's just like the people that can commentate on this market you know they have no money in the market they're just free to commentate on it all day and of course it's also not something that i'm, not, I'm actually okay with either so it's like you know, that's why myself and the other coaches at Chart Champions now are vetted. <laughs> you know, we actually make sure they're taking the trades. Wasn't the case in the past, right? But we were under, you know, a lot of pressure to, you know, get, get some help in. I couldn't do it alone at the time. There's too many people. But now I've got the time to vet the coaches that we've got. You can know that they're trading, know that they're making profits. So we're not just any commentators. We're here with experience, putting our money where our mouth is, and we're literally trading it alongside you we're going to take wins we're going to take losses but we will be trading it with you um so yeah hope you've enjoyed this video i hope that you've really understood what went on up here how i was very bullish and we hit the target we did get higher i want to say this very clear indeed can you imagine if i was posting all this long and chill we're going to get higher bearish divergences but they're not going to play out we're you know not in any shorts still bullish expecting higher can you imagine if that had happened i was this you know clear looking for higher. And if we had dropped from here, can you just imagine if we had dropped from here and not hit that value area low? A lot of people would be very upset. A lot of people would have been very angry because a lot of people listen to what I say. So if I'm in here, like really, 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 really bullish, 
extremely bullish saying this is the level that we're going to come to. And if we had just dropped from here, you know, the bearish divergences played out and I was wrong, th there would have been a lot of very upset and maybe um, let's just say wrecked or upset people, right? So I had so much pressure on my shoulder on this call to play out. So as it played out, of course, I'm very happy. Um, but I kind of thrive off that pressure. I'm putting myself out there. I'm making my biases very clear. Like days like today, I don't really have so much of a bias. I'm, I'm actually happy right now for it to go down or up. Like from, from here, I, I don't have such a strong bias. But when I do have my strong biases, you know, which happen, then I'm making it very clear. There's no guesswork. There's no might do this, might do that. No, it's just like, this is going to happen. Be prepared. That's the information you don't want to miss. Like right now, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see it come down again and get or even get a bigger drop or, or rise. I'm, I'm very happy and content with either scenario from here. Why? Because in my opinion, we don't have that high probability. It's like I actually posted in my group here, right? So I've done a daily morning update live stream today as well. But it's like, I'm not going to just force a setup to give you a setup. Some days we have them, some days we don't. In my opinion, right now at this moment, we don't have anything. So let's remain a little bit of patient. You know, if you followed along, then you can still be in the short from the exact high yesterday and the long from the exact low. So it's like, let's be a bit patient. Let's wait for more data to come to us, make an informed decision. And let's see if we continue within this range and we get another rise from here. Or we get acceptance below the NPC and look for the bigger drop to back test, you know, around 25, 300 next. For me, this is a time to remain patient, planned, prepared for what's to come. I am prepared for this market to remain within this range or to see the breakout. Happy, I'm ready, I'm waiting, and I will execute when I get a trade setup come to me. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you want to see more from myself and the other coaches at Chart Champions, myself, Igor, Rivalry and Severin, then you can get that all from chartchampions.com. So we got inbuilt journals on the website. So we got the cheat sheets. That's where we got the templates, templates like this, right? All hand built from the ground up. You got the glossary, you got the speed runs, you got the courses. Um, so if you want all of that information, daily live stream updates, coaches only, read only channels, where we're giving you our updates, we're giving you our biases, we're giving you the setups. Uh, that's what you get over at chartchampions.com. We are not a signals group. We're not here to hand feed you anything. We are here though to educate you, empower you, and get you up to the level where you can be a self-sufficient trader. So yeah, if that's of interest to you, you know where to get it, chartchampions.com. For everybody else, I'll catch you in the next public video, which may be next week now. So yeah, cheers everybody. Thank you. And I will be here every day over in the Discord. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, Anne. That's me signing out. Goodbye, CC Paul. I love you all. Cheers, Anne. <laughs> Once again, goodbye. <laughs>